If you're trying to break into software engineering right now, here's the terrifying reality. Entry level job postings has dropped 60% between 2022 and 2024. New grads now represent just 7% of big tech hires. And you're also competing against laid off engineers from top tier tech companies with five plus years of experience for those same entry level roles. So in this video, I'm going to share a strategy that will help you stand out from hundreds of other candidates applying for these same roles. Because if you approach this job market the same old way, that is building generic full stack projects, you know, and mass applying to a bunch of jobs, you'll probably spend months making zero progress and watch opportunities just pass you by. And I'm going to share how you can send out. Hey friends, if you're new to the channel, my name is John. I'm a staff software engineer at Meta. I've been in the industry for 10 plus years and have helped a ton of people land their dream jobs and also get promoted. So if you're into that kind of content, don't forget to subscribe and let me know what you want to see in this channel. Let's get right into this topic. Obviously, there's a bunch of jobs replacing engineers. The data kind of stands out for itself. But I think the important thing to understand is what kind of engineers are companies still hiring and trying to retain? So let's first kind of talk about why junior roles are actually disappearing. So what is actually happening with AI and why does it matter for your job search? So Stack Overflow in 2024 made the survey that you know, 63% of professional developers are actively using AI in their development process. And this is 2024. A ton of code is now being generated with AI. And I would say top leading tech companies are all using AI to generate, you know, more than 30% of their code. If you look at a lot of like CEOs, they'll tout even larger percentages and then keep saying that this numbers will escalate over the years. So the real question is, are engineers actually getting replaced? AI is incredible at writing code that just works. Like we all know this, but I still believe that it can't really decide if that code is the right solution for a specific domain context. So here's like a really simple but real example. I recently prompted, you know, Clockco to build like a rich text parser for a project and it generated the working code in like seconds. But it kind of completely missed that we already had a common library that handled this exact functionality. Now you could argue that this is probably like prompting issues or like some bad rules, but here's the point. There are countless situations like this where senior engineers are still essential in the loop. So these like architectural decision trade-offs, large scale code refactors, understanding the existing systems and making decisions about the code. That's where senior engineers really just shine. So this is a very important point to really think about. According to like the Pragmatic Engineers 2025 report, more than 50% of all open roles are now positioned at senior levels or above. Meanwhile, junior roles have dropped significantly. This is because companies need fewer people to write code, but they need the same or even more people guide that AI, guide the AI coding and make ar large architectural decisions and reviewing what essentially the AI is producing. The question obviously becomes, how do you position yourself as someone who can make good decisions, not just writing the code and like generating a bunch of code? In 2025, you need to be an AI native engineer with essentially what I call a T-shaped portfolio. So essentially think of your skill set as a T-shape. So the top of the T is broad knowledge. You understand how computing exists. You understand that there is different AI models and how you know distributed systems kind of works at a high level. You may not be expert on these topics, but you need like awareness because the best solutions usually come from cross pollinations between different domains. For example, React came from combining web development with functional programming patterns. If you know one narrow domain, you'll miss a lot of these opportunities. Also to guide the AI, you kind of need high level understanding of a bunch of different systems so that you know what can go wrong and what good kind of looks like. And this is why this top part is kind of important. But here's also a critical part where most people get wrong. This So this broad level will really help you when you're prompting. And having a high level understanding of a bunch of different moving pieces will give you better context to do the next part of the work even better. Now, the vertical line of the T is deep specialization. 
And this is where being a generalist will absolutely kill your chances, in my opinion. Companies in 2025 want people who can provide value on day one. You need to be able to demonstrate deep expertise in at least one specific thing. So don't say things like full stack web developer anymore. That's just like kind of too vague. You want to say something like backend engineer specializing in AWS or an Android engineer with Kotlin and Jetpack Compose experience. You know, pick something specific and go deep. So once you understand this TSEC concept, what is like a good specialization that you should actually choose? For many years, my answer to this was actually to say, just go into web development when you're starting out. It's usually the easiest point of entry. So you will probably Probably be able to find a job with it but I've definitely changed my mind here on this with like AI being a thing <laughs> because I think a lot of web projects are very easy for the AI to just do right I would say making websites is very complex and you still need a ton of senior engineers and staff engineers. But when you look at what used to be kind of the entry level jobs, marketing pages or like, you know, landing pages, all of those can be one shot in now. If a designer hands a mock up to an AI, it can build something that's pretty accurate. Very importantly, there aren't that many complex decisions that needs to be made for these kind of marketing pages or landing pages. So if you're gonna do web, you should do something that's like very complex. It's basically a full front end app, right? Like a very complex app. But I think there are better choices these days if you're trying to get started and trying to pick a specialization that will get you hired quickly. So option number one is AI engineering. This to me is like the most similar to like a backend engineer in my opinion building rag systems, you know, designing agent workflows, optimizing prompting, managing context windows. There's real demand areas here, in my opinion. This is a whole new thing. There's a ton of jobs in this field right now. And you can learn it right now, today. You could get access to like ChatGPT or Anthropic's like language models through their APIs and just start building stuff using all of these things. There's a whole bunch of things that keeps coming out and every company have zero ideas on actually how to use it. So a lot of startups actually have an advantage here and you could be one of those like engineers that just like really learns all these stuff deeply and be able to be like an AI engineer. Just look at the evidence from like OpenAI and Anthropic. They're, they're hiring junior engineers now for the first time. And like companies like Cursor and Perplexity, thousands of AI powered startups, they need engineers who can build with AI, not just engineers who build the AI itself. Now, option two, in my opinion, is cloud engineering. I think this isn't going away anytime soon. In my opinion, it's gonna get even more complex. Companies are gonna now need to manage a ton of like GPU clusters, right? You need to use the massive amount of data that you already have. Even if you're working with OpenAI or Anthropic or, any, or like Google, like you need to know all of these like cloud infrastructures to be able to power that so you can handle like the scale for your own companies, right? Like all of these skills in AWS, like, you know, Kubernetes and things like terraforming, like all these things, this architecture and distributed systems, they're still gonna be in high demand. You know, you can just go and study and become an AWS solution architect or like, you know, a GCP professional cloud architect for Google. It's actually one of the easiest hacks, in my opinion, to just prove that you know cloud computing. You actually need to study to take that test. I did it once. It's pretty straightforward, but it just takes work, but you can do it. It's a huge advantage when you're early in your career, in my opinion. Option three, in my opinion, is mobile development. Now, I may be a little biased because I'm a mobile engineer. Easy mobile apps can be one-shotted with AI, but I guarantee you that large companies like Meta and Google and Apple, they're gonna have a ton of mobile engineers for a really long time. Even if an AI is just getting better and better, we just have so much demand for mobile engineers. It's just insane. And there's this kicker with AI. Why I'm still very bullish on it is because there's wearables. You know, AR and VR devices are emerging. You know, MetaQuest, Apple Vision Pro is a thing. But like these smart glasses are like kind of the big thing, right? The big question mark. All of these things are new interfaces and new software that needs to be written. AI probably doesn't have enough training data on these kind of new 
form factors and UI interfaces, right? I, but I guarantee you when these devices hit mainstream adoption, the underlying platform will be mobile, like Android probably and iOS if Apple ever comes out with their glasses. So yeah, all of this stuff will introduce a new UI paradigm, you know, spatial interfaces, gesture controls, voice first interactions. So I think someone you know, really good mobile engineers will need to figure out what good looks like. And that's gonna take time, a long time in my opinion. And that's where a lot of the mobile engineers will probably go. And a lot of strong fundamentals in mobile, you'll easily be able to carry into wearables and AI glasses and things like that. So yeah, let me know in the comments below if you think there's even better choices that I'm not really thinking of, right? So once you have a specialization you, and you also have this kind of like high level understanding of a bunch of things, how do you actually stand out? How do you get noticed and get hired? Here is kind of, in my opinion, a make or break factor that most people ignore. A ton of people are just leaving potential job offers on the table by not doing this, and that is to build in public. I know this feels pretty uncomfortable. You know, I myself dealt with this when I first started, but when you post like your projects on LinkedIn, you know, and sharing what you learn on, you know, Twitter or threads or making videos about your code, here's what actually happens when you build in public. When I browse LinkedIn and I see someone that's like demonstrating like their AI workflow, for example, or explaining some really like complex technical concept that really catches my attention. And it's not just me. There's a ton of people in the comments that are very excited about these demos or these projects. And there's a bunch of recruiters there. If that person mentions that they're looking for an opportunity, I guarantee you they're going to get a ton of reach outs from the right people that actually care about what they're working on. Building in public gives you like, in my opinion, like three massive advantages. Basically proof that you can actually do the work. You're not claiming that you know React or some, you know, Jetpack Compose or something. You're just like showing it with the app that you built. And number two, it kind of forces you to learn deeply. When you have to explain something, you kind of have this moment where you don't want to just post it out unless you know for sure that what you build and what you're saying is, you know, accurate. Because you'll probably get feedback, and you'll probably get hate. And finally, I think thirdly, it builds your communication skills. And in one of my videos, I said, communication is probably the highest leverage skill that you can learn in your career. And I still believe it in this world of AI. Your ability to explain these technical decisions and collaborate and get other people on board with the, how you're guiding the AI, the communication part becomes even more valuable, not less. But yeah, so in my opinion, really getting good and crisp about your communication will pay huge dividends in the future. It'll help you in your interviews too, by being able to speak clearly about your thoughts. And once you have written down things to post, you can remember that content better. And it's, it's another talking point for your interview. So build in public. So the reality here is that breaking into the engineering market in 2025 is really, really hard. But companies still need very skilled engineers. They just need different kind of engineers. You know, they need people who can make decisions about the code at a very quick speed, not just really write it anymore. People who can demonstrate their skills and communicate effectively. So if you follow this kind of framework that I'm giving you with like the T-shaped portfolio, building in public, I think you'll have a real shot at landing your dream job. Now, all of these take a lot of work, but I guarantee you it's better than just shooting off a hundred or a thousand AI slop resumes <laughs> blindly. So for people who understand these new rules, you're gonna kill it. So yeah, I want to hear from you. Drop a comment right now. Tell me what you think about this video. Tell me what specialization you're gonna do. And also tell me what you're gonna first build in public and tag me on LinkedIn. It'll be really fun to see. And if this was helpful for you, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, if you're interested in some AI videos, go ahead and check out this playlist. And if you're interested in software engineering, check out this playlist. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this video and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.